Hi guys, my crew here. This is the Quest for Survival Hardcore Iron Man series and we're on episode 30 now. In this episode we're starting the Herb Lord grind towards overloads and we're getting everything we need sorted so we can get them next episode. Once I have overloads and everything like that I should be able to actually do some bossing and get some good kills on different bosses. I kind of want to be overgeared for most of the bosses I do because being hardcore I don't really want to die and lose all my stuff but either way let's get into the video. Starting this video off I got 86 herb lore with a daily for adrenaline pots. Obviously I extended it with Vizwax and it gave a considerable amount of experience. Whenever you get a herb lore daily it's worth doing them especially on an Iron Man. I handed in all my tokens on the charity event that just went to get all the cosmetic overrides from this one. It costs 10,000 tokens to unlock completely everything, but as an Iron Man you can get infinite amount of tokens just like any other account. So in my currency pouch I had 52,000 tokens left over that I could do nothing with because Iron Man can't change them into mystery boxes or anything like that. So there's 52,000 tokens that are just sitting there doing nothing. It would be nice if Jagex just allowed us to only get 10,000 so then I don't feel bad looking at that giant stack. Doing some of the smithing event at the beach when I have to AM. FK, I got to 86 smithing. I may go a bit higher and I may get like 87 so I can boost smithing and do my corrupted ore but I doubt I'll go higher than 87 with this event because it's just way too slow. I completed the quest a tower of two cats which is needed for one of a kind and I want to do one of a kind for the necklace. That dragon rider amulet is really really useful but it does require you to go into the wilderness so that's always really really spooky on a hardcore iron man. I waited until it was quite late at night and then I went on a very low populated world and ran up through the wilderness. I had a friend who hadn't done the quest as well so he kind of ran with me and then just told me that there's like no one there and all of that good stuff. Even with someone looking out ahead it's still very very scary. But then once you get into the cave and you're in an instanced area it's absolutely fine. One of a kind quest is very very good. It gave 90,000 magic, 80,000 summoning, 45,000 dungeoneering and 5,000 divination and the dragon rider amulet. The Dragon Rider Amulet is really really good because it gives so much prayer bonus, decent stats and Dragon Breath ability is much better. So you're going to hit harder with Dragon Breath and you've got all of those awesome stats that's way better than the glory I had. I should have got this amulet a while ago. Completing that quest and using the lamps got me to 78 summoning as well. Now that I had my Dragon Rider amulet, I wanted to go camp via watch for quite a while. Via watch a decent experience in loads of different skills, plus they give so many herbs it's unreal. Using my vampirism aura whenever it's up is really really neat because soul split and vampirism heal me so well when they're in combo with each other. It's not AFK by any means, and I would never AFK these because they're so dangerous, especially when a lot come on you at once, they can really really hit hard. So I can't really AFK like I would on my main, but these are so decent and the herbs are too good not to go get. The Sun Spear levels up quite quickly on these as well so it's also really nice invention XP disassembling the Sun Spears. So all of that XP alongside the combat and the farming and the fire making really really adds up to be a lot of experience an hour. So if you did ever need any herb lore supplies I do recommend via watch because of all of the experience you get alongside those supplies. With the parts left over that I had on my Iron Man I made three more augmenters ready for sun spears at via watch. Crackling doesn't work at via watch and I had crackling on my sun spear so I switched out crackling for scavenging too. Scavenging 2 is going to be really nice at Firewatch because you AoE quite a few down and it's going to give me some free components and I always like free components. I had to get a god banner to help boost my herb lore level for extreme potions. To get a god banner you just need to do all the skilling part of the god emissary. So it's really tedious tasks like get these metal fragments, you need to get 5 of them. Then once you had them you had to use your logs and light fires in the middle of a couple of different cities like in Draenor and in Rimington and then there was others in Ardy and stuff like that as well. Once you've done all of these really boring and tedious tasks, it takes around like 20 minutes or so. You then need to prepare the metal artifact. You just put all of the stuff you've gathered together with the artifact on an anvil and then you use loads of different runes on it and then that makes it done. Once you've done that you get given a god banner. You can speak to your emissary for a little bit of experience in a couple of different skills. It's nothing much but I guess it's something. Free XP is free XP and I'm not going to say no. So now I have a god banner I can use it to boost two levels in herb lore for 30 minutes every single day which is really going to help with the extreme potions. 
Making egg streams with a god banner is nice and easy. It gives you a consistent plus two boost, but every so often when your stats are decreased, it will go down and then you have to wait like five seconds for the god banner to refresh it again. So there is little points where there's like five seconds where you can't make anything, but then you can just get right back into making it as soon as the god banner takes it back up. While doing my extreme attacks, I got to 87 herbler, which then means the god banner is boosting me to 89 and I can start on extreme strengths. While doing all my pickpocketing when I was making money for prayer and things like that, I had so many one dose potions. With all these one dose potions, I can decant them to free dose with the guy in the GE. Decanting them into free doses gave me loads of actual potions to use for extremes. So I had 500 super attacks and strengths, 380 defenses, 250 magics and ranges. Then I also got some additional super energies which I can use for more adren pots. Thieving really does help for overload supplies, that's for sure. I feel like the hardest part of an overload will be the Torstals. Some more loyalty points came through, and with those loyalty points, I bought the Penance Aura. Penance Aura is going to help with Firewatch as well, because I can just take food and then keep space for supplies, and just use the Penance Aura to always give me my prayer back. I think I could probably do an hour there with like only two prayer pots, and it will work out really, really well. It will save me supplies while getting supplies. Firewatch are just such good experience. I got 91 defense and I even got 81 invention. So my invention is actually getting closer and closer to 99 as well. I really love the fact that invention pretty much trains itself. Now what I need to do consistently every three hours is go pick some papayas on the trees I have grown. I'm going to leave the papayas I have grown standing there. So every 30 minutes it will grow another papaya, which means every three hours I can go pick six papayas. I really, really need papayas for my adrenaline pots and then my replenishment potions eventually as well. So this is going to be part of my farming run for a while. I did manage to get 87 farming, checking the health of this papaya. Another thing that I did is I set a timer for 1 hour and 20 minutes. Every 1 hour and 20 minutes I'm going to be doing a herb run. I really really need torstals and other useful herbs for extremes. So I'm going to be growing all the useful herbs that I can while I'm doing via watch and everything like that to get as much experience in herb lore as possible. Another really useful boss for herbs is Hellweir. Hellweir is really, really neat because he drops Lanta Dimes quite often and he drops like 90 at a time. So I went with my friend Wonder Sheep. He tanked it for me to make it much easier on me. All I had to do was switch to Protect from Melee and use Devotion whenever he jumped and spun on me. And obviously you just freed them the bleed. With him tanking, it made Hellweir so smooth and so easy. And we had a loot share on, so it just gave half of the loot to him and half to me. By the end of this hour, we got quite even on our drops and the resources to hell it does give is pretty damn good not only does it give lantern dimes it gives raw sharks it gives some magic logs and everything like that really really worth killing to be honest without overloads i wouldn't solo it just because hardcore iron man life and you know it's kind of scary but duo in hell where it's nice and easy if i'm just sitting here maging it's very very easy to deal with him if he jumps on you or if you get a mushroom on you or something like that compared to if you were doing all of that while tanking Ah, yay! This is why I came, Jack. 91 Lanta Dimes. <laughs> I'll take them. After that one hour of duoing with my friend, I managed to get quite a few different good resources. I got 270 Lanta Dimes. I got some coal, some rune, 437 magic logs. I got some uncut gems, some raw sharks, and even some dwarf weeds and crystal keys. I think the two best items here are the Lanta Dimes and the Seals. Faulty Seals is reputation in any boss that I want it. So then when I actually go and solo, I'm going to have more reputation and more drop chance for myself. Getting Seals in duo or trio is a really, really good way to bump up your reputation. It was time for me to make some extreme magics on my Iron Man, which means I needed mud runes. When I made mud runes, I pretty much did it the exactly same way as I did in my guide. I had about 20 lumberyard teleports from all of the clues that I did. So I used those lumberyard teleports in order to go right outside the earth altar, run in there, use the lunar spell magic imbue so I don't need a talisman, use the water runes on the altar, and then all of my essence then turns into mud runes. Also, you gotta remember to take a binding necklace because you won't get anywhere near the same amount of mud 
mudrunes if you don't wear one. So I just done this over and over again till I got about a thousand mudrunes. Then I had to grind the mudrunes in order to get ready to add them to the super magics to make extreme magics. While making some more extremes, I got to 89 herb lore. Only two more levels until I can boost with a spicy stew to make overloads. But getting to 89 herb lore means that I could make those extreme magics that I was just prepping for because boosting two from 89 with a god banner gets me to 91 which is the level required for extreme magics. When I hit level 90 I'll be able to make the extreme ranges but I need to get Grenwall spikes for those. I had a hell of a lot of adrenaline pots and super restores at this point from all of the resources that I've been gathering so I bought the replenishment potion recipe for 200k. With the 4 dose adrenaline pots, the 4 dose super restores and some crystal floss, I could make replenishment potions. Replenishment potions are one of my favourite potions in the game. It gives you back some prayer points whenever you sip it because it's a super restore, but every 2 minutes you can use it as an adrenaline pot too. So normally I would sunshine, sip one of these, it will give me back to maximum prayer and it will also give me 25% adrenaline. It saves so much inventory space if you did want to use adrenaline pots because you barely need to take any prayer pots at all because this does most of the work. I'm finally getting some useful pots on my Iron Man. I'm probably going to go back to Hell Weir at the start of next episode, but then I can use my replenishment potions and my extreme magics and it should go even smoother. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content. Give it a like if you did enjoy. And until next time, see ya.